इसमें बोल रहे हैं ना so in, in the, the coming few minutes of journey we will be going through the burden of uh, diabetes stress in type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients and what is the difference between major respiratory disorder and the diabetes stress comprehensive approach will be done for screening and diagnosis of diabetes stress and how the treatment approach should be there we will see in the coming few minutes what is euthymia first we should know then we we can understand the distress eu means normal well so euthymia means well mental health good mental health so that is required in diabetic population also because our patients are afraid of the disease they are diagnosed they are in the mode of uh, depression denial or any uh, various modes are there when the patient is diagnosed with diabetes so uh, to begin with we will start with the burden of uh, diabetes distress and what is the understanding and the hurdles living with the patients who are living with diabetes diabetes is a disease which has a profound impact on the, both the physical and mental well being of the affected individual you know that diabetes related stress or distress that is diabetes distress dd which i call it leads to burden of self care interpersonal issues emotional worries regarding the ability to cope with the illness there are relationship with the caregivers and healthcare professionals which are very important part which we neglect so diabetes distress is defined as opposite of euthymia that is defined as a emotional response characterized by extreme apprehension discomfort or dejection due to perceived inability of the patient to cope the challenges to live with diabetes so it is the extreme apprehension discomfort or dejection to live with the diabetes so my dear friends we know that prevalence of diabetes distress is very high which we neglect in both type 2 and type 1 diabetic patients it is about 36% in this study the overall prevalence of dd was found that is diabetes distress and in type 1 diabetic population the prevalence was 42.1% and 54.4% was incidence in type 1 diabetic population the time points in diabetes patients life they are associated with increased level of diabetes distress in these stages at the time of diagnosis at the time of learning how to self manage the diabetes at the emergence of a complication at the time of switching to the insulin or oral therapy and even they are distressed at the time of switching over the doctors or healthcare givers so diabetes distress is often confused with depression in our <coughs> day to day clinic so how you can differentiate the diabetes distress with the major depressive disorder so major depressive disorder we know is a complex and disabling condition which frequently coexists with diabetes in many patients we see they are depressed but diabetes distress is different than the major depressive disorder in type 1 it is nearly about 12% and in uh, type 2 it is 19% so patients with diabetes uh, and major depressive disorder have ultimate poor health outcomes and they have high mortality so is diabetes dis- depressed labeled as same as clinical depression no my dear friends it is not the same in unlike depression the diabetes distress is a persistent over time associated with glycemic control and disease management problems and it is expressed in terms of magnitudes that is severity and content that is nature of distress so diabetes distress and depression can co occur however it is important to differentiate them and treat them accordingly so major differences between the mdd and dd are <clears throat> the major depressive disorder should have at least 5 of the 9 well defined symptoms that we will see and that persist for at least 2 weeks like uh, not having the uh, thrill in watching the tv playing games he is depressed not eating properly or overeating all these are some symptoms of depressive disorder so based on patient symptoms considered as a comorbid psychiatric disorder in contrast <coughs> sorry the dd that is diabetes distress is defined by context of diabetes and its management and includes a wide range of emotional experiences it is based on source of diabetes distress it is not considered as a separate condition indicating psychopathology of the different forms of the spectrum of diabetes so the depression i have told you five out of uh, more of the below mentioned symptoms should be present that is depressed mood diminished interest in the activities change in appetite change in uh, sleep pattern either he is sleeping more or less psychomotor agitation or retardation fatigue all these are the symptoms of depression in spite of that uh, the, the diabetes distress 
If the patient is unmotivated, burnt out, overwhelmed, frustrated, angry, he is feeling guilt, fear of hypoglycemia or complication, and he feels lonely. So these are the basic differentiating features between DD and MDD. So there are various diagnostic criteria for DD, that is problem areas in diabetes, paid diabetes distress scale, that is DDS. And for depression, we know that there is PHQ-9, uh, Center for Epidemiological Studies, uh, depression scale, which is CSD. So measurement of depression and distress is important owing to high prevalence of comorbid disorders and persistence of depressive affect and diabetes distress over time. So you have to follow these scales or screening pattern. You can teach or make a multidisciplinary team in your clinic to diagnose this uh, diabetes distress, to screen it, to uh, counsel the patient. So screening and diagnosis is very important, but because you don't have time, you have to make a team in your clinic. So need for development of diabetes distress scale. There are various limitations in the measurement used for screening diabetes distress. There was two-point scale, which was used previously, which included fe feeling overwhelmed or feeling that I am often falling with my diabetes routine. It is not proper. Now the newer scale is 17 uh, features scale. That is very cumbersome to do it at, in our clinics, but you can train uh, staff that just ask these questions. And if it is a, not a problem, you give the score of one. If it is a problem, it is a very serious problem, then it is six. So out of these <coughs> 17 parameters, you can ask the patient one by one, and patients are required to consider the degree or level to which each of the items included in the scale may have distressed him or her during the past one month, and then to circle the appropriate number. So basically, this is a <coughs> multidisciplinary approach therapy or for even diagnosis and treatment also. So 17 DDS score aids in identifying major sources of diabetes distress, that is powerlessness, negative social perceptions, friend or family distress, size, si physician distress, hypoglycemia distress, management distress, and eating distress. So these are the various features which we should rule out, and these are the areas where we should uh, screen the patient. The 3D study <coughs> have highlighted that DDS-17 score have shown the key diabetes variables, that is the HbA1c, uh, self-efficacy, healthy diet, and physical activity. So if the patient is having diabetes distress, A1c will go high, he will have less uh, diet control, and physical activity will be less, and self-efficacy, self-management will be less. So if the uh, diabetes distress is over, taking your uh, life, so you will have bad control of diabetes, diet and exercise will be left behind. So coping skills assessment are usually primary investigation for DD prevention and treatment. There are six styles analyzed by glucocopper questionnaire, the negativity, acceptance, blame, optimization, planning, and action. All these you have to screen in your patients that how the coping styles are there, and the management strategies are very important to improve the self-perception, to improve the coping skills, minimize the burden that needs to be coped with, involve other partners in coping. So my dear friends, in this, the family support is very important to overcome the diabetes distress. So it is a self-perceived insufficiency of coping skills, hence most management approaches need to be focused on the individual. So diabetes distress is very important to diagnose and to treat it. The self-care is very important to train the patient for self-care, for the healthy dietary habits, exercise habits, self-monitoring of glucose, and if he is on injectable therapy or oral therapy, they have to be taken care of their own. So self-care is very important. There is an AEIOU approach for the therapy, and that is ask and assess coping skills, A, Eliminate negative coping skills, E. Internalize positive coping mechanisms. Observe ongoing basis. Upgrade one's understanding. So AEIOU mechanism can be taken for therapy. And for minimizing discomfort of change, you require the breaking changes suggested to discrete bits. Prioritizing action for change. Focusing on essential parts. 
making complete use of human resource and technology. So methods to minimize discomfort of dealing with change caused by diabetes are simple. You have to train them in these areas. So targeted areas are diabetes related emotional burden, physical stress, regime related stress or interpersonal distress. So multidisciplinary treatment approach which I have told you is specifically targeting the four areas of distress. They are very crucial for diabetes related distress management. So multidisciplinary approach which will take care of emotional burden, interpersonal distress, regime related distress and physician or healthcare related distress. So these treatment approach team you have to make it. So my dear friends the clinical pulse the alarm is belling. You have to diagnose these patients at early stage to prevent sudden fluctuation in A1C levels, to prevent the major life changes and emotional reaction of negative results. So <coughs> sorry, you have to diagnose this DD very early in the stage of diabetes patients which we are missing. So to teach them how to cope with the distress. So listen to the patient properly, identify the underlying feelings can help manage distress properly, help patient to talk about the experience of having diabetes, identify the specific source of their distress, normalize these feelings and help patient to cope with distress as a part of regular diabetes care. So to uh, summarize, the key take home messages are diabetes distress refers to the emotional response encompassing the extreme apprehension and discomfort consequent to the perceived inability to cope with the challenges of living with diabetes. So our newly diagnosed patients are very much afraid that how I will live my life with the diabetes. So we have to teach them that you have to just follow the diet exercise and take the medicines properly so you can live the normal life. So diabetes distress <coughs> has to be overcome by counseling and proper channelizing the patient to the various aspect of psychological therapy. Differentiation of diabetes distress from depression is very important because the treatment approaches are different and identification of cause of distress and optimization of practical aspects of diabetes distress management contribute for overall health and well-being of the affected individual. So to finish with my dear friends, we know that this is a very neglected part that is diabetes distress which we don't diagnose. So we need a multidisciplinary team in our clinics as we <coughs> have trained the diabetic foot, our paramedical staff for foot diagnosis, the problems of foot are to be screened. So we have to make a multidisciplinary uh, approach in our clinics from today. If uh, the patient is coming, you should say, uh, or you can uh, train the dietitians or your paramedical staff that you should inquire about those 17 questions and to diagnose the diabetes distress and by psychotherapy or counseling, we can overcome the phobia that the patient is diagnosed with diabetes. So thanks a lot for your patient hearing.